Hey guys, Bullion Shark back again for Bullion Shark TV. Nick and Nick here. How you doing, guys? We got a really informative video for you guys today because it's how to strategize and collect a Morgan and Peace set. And as we know, the Morgan dollars and the Peace dollars are two of the most collectible coins in history. And you can build a pretty extensive set if you do it correctly. And there's several different methods to doing it, ranging from easy to more difficult. So Nick, do you care to start us off by giving us a little background on both the Morgan and Peace dollars? Sure, absolutely. So the Morgans were first originally struck in 1878, and then of course they minted them till 1921. However, there was a brief pause in production from 1905 to 1921, with 1921 being the last year of issue of the Morgan. Then with the, with the Peace dollars, they actually struck those, of course, in 1921, changing over from the Morgan silver dollar design until 1935. However, with the Peace dollars, there was a, a pause in production from 1929 to 1933, and then they started back up in 1934 again. Okay, so the Morgan is pretty much, the end of the Morgan brings in the beginning of the Peace. Correct. Okay, so it's kind of a back-to-back -back set, but as we said, some of the most collectible coins in history, because there are multiple strategies in which you could do it. Now, uh, these come from all different mint marks, Nick, both the Morgan and Peace. Correct. What mint marks uh, can you find both of these coins where they were struck? Sure, so the Morgan Silver Dollars were struck at five different mints. You have the New Orleans, the San Francisco, the Philadelphia, the Denver. The Denver, of course, which was a one-year-only issue, only in 1921, they struck the Denver mint mark. And then, of course, the most sought after, typically the Carson City, which, of course, everybody knows for the Wild Wild West. Now, with the Peace Dollars, they were struck at three different mints, the Philadelphia mint, the Denver mint, and the San Francisco mint, Nick. So, they come from all of the United States, all different mintages. However, that is our first strategy that you can uh, collect for your set. And it's probably the easiest, is, uh, is doing a mint mark set. Correct. So a mid-mark set basically is the easiest way to collect these coins. If you don't have an extensive budget and you want to put together some sort of piece and Morgan dollar set, you could collect one coin from each mint mark. So a lot of people with the Morgans, they'll choose the inexpensive coins in the series. Um, the Philadelphia's, the New Orleans, San Francisco's, Denver's, you can get relatively inexpensively. Carson City is going to cost you money. Even uh, you know a brilliant uncirculated Carson City, uh, something that's a sixty grade or higher is going to be four or five hundred bucks these days. So with that being said, um, most people opt with the Carson City to get those dates, the eighteen eighty two, eighty three, and eighty four, because those are the most common in the Carson City series. And then with the Peace dollars, again, same thing. You can put together one Philadelphia, one Denver, and one San Francisco. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what year, it's just a matter of, you know, what you're looking to spend and just getting one from each mint mark, Nick. Okay, and as a beginner, would, that's what you would, uh, would expect me to jump into. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have a substantial amount of funds to put into the set and you're looking for something that's just going to cover every mint mark and uh, a variety of different dates, I would suggest doing the mint mark set. It's the least expensive, of course, out of the three. Okay, so that's perfect for a beginner, perfect to jump into and obviously the easiest way uh, to start your Morgan or Peace set. Of course. But I would say that the next step in doing that is to do a full date run. Sure. And how do you do that? So then you could expand your collection and you could go and do one coin from every year. So not necessarily, of course, every mint mark because that would get very comprehensive and very expensive, but you could do one coin from each year of production. Now, again, still with the Peace Dollar series, that's a much more inexpensive set to put together. So if you're looking for something that's inexpensive and you're on a budget, I would start do with the Peace Dollars because of course there's less dates in the Peace Dollar run and um, the coins typically are less expensive on a whole than the Morgans. Um, however, if you want to take that venture and get into the Morgans, you could collect one from each year. It's a very popular way to do it, but the, the dollar figure will start tacking up because uh, there's lots of coins in the Morgan sets, Nick. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to also do that, uh, whether it's mint marks or dates, is by going uh, uncirculated coins, ungraded coins. Uh, so you can build a set uh, from for ungraded coins. However, you can also start building your set in lower grade coins and working your way up to the top. Now, what would be the uh, a better low grade that people can jump into? Is would that be an MS sixty three? Um, I mean, if you want to stay in the mint state, uh, the uncirculated, uh, I mean, you could really go at the bottom of the line, of course, at a mint state 60 if you want to get graded coins. Mm -hmm. If you want to get ungraded coins, brilliant uncirculated, which are coins that typically grade anywhere from a 60 to 62, 63 grade. Um, of course, more cost effective is the ungraded set, Nick. 
because there's not the grading costs associated with the coins. Okay. And um, you know, the grading, of course, uh, the graded coins bring a premium over the ungraded. So if you're looking for something that just looks really beautiful, I would stick with the uncirculated set. Once you get down to uh, almost uncirculated, you're gonna start seeing more imperfections in the fields, more uh, you know, on the high points of the coin, the breast feathers on the eagle, um, Lady Liberty, you, you know, on the face, you're gonna start to see more nicks. And um, it's not going to be as eye appealing. So you, if you want something that really has great eye appeal, I would stick with the uncirculated, um, ungraded coins. And if you want to venture into getting a graded set, it's going to cost you more money, but you could venture into, say, a mid state 60. And, and as time goes on, I'm sure people would want to kind of upgrade their set and start getting into the bigger grades. Sure. A lot of people do. A lot of people start out with what they can afford, and then they have a prerogative, uh, a goal in mind of, I'm going to upgrade to eventually a 63 set. Now, you know, one thing to consider though, Nick, is that if you're, depending on what kind of set you're doing, if you're doing a 63 set in the Morgans or the Peace Dollars and it's just gonna be a mint mark set, those are still affordable. Mm -hmm. um, if you're getting into a whole date run of 63 grade Morgans, you have to know going in that there's certain key date coins, Nick, that are co gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, an 1893S, which is the kingpin of all Morgan silver dollars, only 100,000 minted. That coin in a mid-state 60 is going to cost you way north of 100000 bucks. So you have to be willing to go into the set and say that I'm going to take lesser grades, lower grade coins mm -hmm. for the key dates, such as the 1893S, uh, you know, the 89 Carson City, unless you decide that you're going to avoid those key dates totally and you're going to just get one from that year that's less expensive, maybe say at 1893 Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. However, those still, those coins could cost thousands and thousands of dollars in, in mid-state 60. So, you know, you want to make sure that um, you know what you're getting into before you start the set. So having a solid plan and a solid foundation of where you want to go, you should have a plan before you even jump into the set. Absolutely. Yeah, it's better not to go haphazardly so you can build a consistent set over time. So you're not pulling from here and there and all over the place. But that, that's very interesting. You know, planning is probably the most important part of building the set rather right. than just going along. So Absolutely, and, and and keep in mind, Nick, that you're not gonna find all the coins in one shot. I mean, these are scarce pieces. Some of the dates, some of the years are much harder to find than others, and you have to put time aside and say, this might take me a couple of years to put this set together. Yeah. Not only because of budget constraints, but um, you're talking, I mean, it's not all the coins are readily available, like the new issue coins. Mm -hmm. So um, that brings us to our, our final way of collecting. It's probably the most advanced way that you possibly can it would be to do a full set of all mint marks and all dates. How difficult is that to get into? Very difficult, expert. very, very comprehensive. Um, with the Peace Dollars, again, less comprehensive than the Morgans because there's just less coins that were minted, a shorter time frame of mintage, and less mint marks, right? Less mints that actually made the coin. For the Morgan Dollars, I mean, you're talking, there's a ton, a ton of coins that you have to collect, and you're talking five different mint marks. So not every year has every mint mark. Like for instance, there's no Carson City in 1921, right? Um, you know, there's no New Orleans in 1921. There was only a Philly, Denver, and San Francisco. So certain years won't have all five mint marks, but a lot of them do. And it gets very, very cost, uh, cost uh, prohibitive and very expensive. So you got to make sure when you're going in that you know, I'm going to put this whole set together especially with some of those key dates like I told you. I mean, um, don't be surprised, the sticker shock that, you know, you go to buy 1889 Carson City and in, in a mint state grade and you're looking at, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 plus. I mean, some of the coins get very, very expensive. Especially considering the fact that a set like that, if you're going to an expert level, which obviously would take a lot of time, you don't want to jump into that right away, unless you are an expert and you're just looking to get into a set that you haven't been in before. Mm -hmm. However, I think, uh, the most difficult aspect of that set is the, is the sheer quantity and the magnitude of the coins. There are over a hundred coins in that set, Nick. Yeah. That's gonna be a difficult set uh, to collect. It's gonna take a lot of time, but if you're a beginner, I would certainly recommend starting off with something as simple as just the, uh, just the mint mark set. I, I think uh, you can agree with that too. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you wanted to do the date set, um, Peace Dollars are a great way to do it. You can get a really nice, brilliant uncirculated Peace Dollar set. Um, you know, for a little over a, a thousand bucks. You know, if you wanted to get a nice, you know, set that's all blast white, really beautiful eye appeal, beautiful, you could put it in a beautiful case, you know, plastic holder, whatever it may be. And um, you don't have to get the key dates like the 34S, 
which could have cost you a boatload of money, but you could get the 34P, whatever it may be, 34D, and um, make that set very affordable and get a really nice set for a little over a thousand bucks. So if you're gonna start, you don't wanna do a mint mark set, Nick, but you want to get a little more comprehensive, you wanna do a date run, mm -hmm. that's what I would suggest. Start with the um, piece dollars, a date run of those. Much, much easier to put together, and the set will have really great eye appeal. That's one thing a lot of people do, Nick. They start the set, and then they're disappointed that they can't afford the better quality coins mm -hmm. in the set, and then when they look at it, they see their whole set is congruent, right? Everything's blast white, gorgeous, mint state, and then you have the 1893S, which is a good four. And you know, it looks like it's run over by a train, and you're like, I can't, I spent thousands of dollars on this coin, and it still looks horrible. It doesn't match the rest of my set. So if you want something that has great eye appeal and matches your set, make sure you pick the right strategy for you um, so you don't get caught in that kind of debacle. And, and a final strategy, uh, I, I know we're talking about going with more of the common dates. Can someone do a set of just key dates if they wanted to? Sure, yeah, I mean, there's many different ways to skin the cat. I mean, you could do everything from just San Francisco minted coins, Denver minted coins, right? You could do uh, Philadelphia minted coins, and then you could do just key dates. You could say, I'm gonna pick the 1893S, the 1899CC, you know, all the better dates in the series, and I'm just gonna do key dates. A lot of people, Nick, what they do for the Morgan dollars, they love to put together the Carson City set, okay. which Carson Cities are only minted for a short period of time. So um, with that being said, you know, but people love to put those together, minted from 1878 to 1893, mm -hmm. and uh, then they didn't produce those anymore. So, you know, a lot of people like to put together just the Carson Cities and, and have the Wild Wild West set. Because they're slightly more scarce than all the rest of the mints. Yeah, Carson City uh, Morgans were typically lower mintage coins, uh, fewer survived in higher grades, and uh, it's, you know, it has that, you know, that persona of being from the Wild West, so people love that. Yeah, and uh, overall, guys, there's there's multiple ways that you can start building a set, and it doesn't just have to be uh, Morgan and Peace. You can build a set of uh, any coin that they really uh, produced for an extended period of time, and there's multiple ways to get into those too. But make sure you plan uh, your your proper attack, because that's fifty percent of the battle right there. If you don't have a proper plan heading into everything, find the plan that's that's best for you, that fits your budget, and it's something that you can carry out over a long period of time because. You don't want to start a set and then you're not going to be able to finish it. So I highly recommend sitting down, strategizing properly, figure out which one of these plans is great for you, and then I would start collecting your set. Don't get too excited and jump the gun right away. A lot of planning has to go into it. But uh, Nick, I just want to thank you for sitting down with us again. No problem. Uh, there pleasure. are a lot of people out there that are going to use this video and start building their set, or they're going to uh, try to switch up their strategy maybe. But I think that going forward, um, Collecting sets is one of the best things that you can do in terms of numismatic pieces. And uh, depending on how you start your set, uh, we want to wish you good luck uh, in the future. And hopefully you can, uh, you can get yourself a full set. So from here at Bullion Shark TV, I'm Nick, and this is... Nick again. And uh, we thank you guys for joining us. Again, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And check out BullionSharks.com, our website, for more information. And uh, thank you guys again for joining us. Take care, guys.